And joining me now is Democratic Congressman Mike Quigley of Illinois, who served for eight years on the House Intelligence Committee. So, Congressman, you supported banning or downloading TikTok on government devices, and I think you support now the Senate bipartisan bill. Um, Chinese divestment, though, is not going to not going to work as far as the Chinese government is concerned. Uh, where do you stand now? Well, how do you think we can fix this with so much pressure on the Hill to do something very drastic? Sure. Look, I don't think they're going to disinvest, uh, go along with that, but I think they're simply going to have to. As you said, as a member of the Intel Committee, I had a ringside seat of what a foreign influence campaign can have. Uh, the 2016 uh, Russia and others uh, were involved in that. Now, how we have uh, a platform that we have absolutely no control over, no assurance, isn't being influenced by the Communist Party of, of China. Uh, and the Chinese are not being less aggressive, they're being more aggressive on our assaults on cyber, intellectual property, spying, and even militarily. So if anyone thinks that the, the Chinese uh, can be trusted in terms of what they said today on the Hill and that they won't try to influence or use this data, uh, they're simply being naive. And let's listen to an exchange earlier today between Congressman Pallone and the CEO of TikTok about whether or not they sell information, personal data. Would you commit to not selling your data to anyone? Uh, Congressman, uh, I actually am in support of some rules. I didn't ask you whether the rules. Yeah. I asked you whether the company, TikTok, would commit to not selling its data to anyone and just using it for its own purposes internally. I can get back to you on the details. Okay. So uh, some of his answers have been not entirely responsive. At least that's been the complaint of some of the congressmen up there. No, absolutely. I don't expect them to be, and I don't expect, again, I think we'd be naive to trust them at all, given the stakes and what's happened already. So uh, at this point in time, I would say those, well, they're so popular. Well, the fact that it is extremely popular does nothing to me but make them a larger Trojan horse that can have extraordinary influence here. And again, it's not just collecting the data, it's also using that data to influence over the period of time. It's something that we need to be mindful of. They want to disinvest, then fine. The Justice Department, the FBI are investigating, in fact, whether they've used it to spy on journalists. Uh, there's also the fact that China has a, a law that it has the right to go into a so-called private company and take data from it at will. Uh, absolutely. Further proof, there's nothing that the owners of TikTok can do, even if their heart is in the right place, to convince us that they don't, that they don't have influence over them to get the data that the Chinese Communist Party wants and to use it to influence us or to hurt us in many other ways. It seems harsh, but uh, this is extraordinarily important. It's the challenge of the next decade. Now, I see you're wearing a yellow and blue ribbon, uh, and you've been very active on Ukraine. I want to ask you about that, because you visited the Joint Systems Manufacturing Center in Lima, Ohio, to learn more about the M1 Abrams tanks. The U.S. is now accelerating somewhat uh, the transfer of those systems to Ukraine to the fall, not in time for the spring offensive. Uh, how worrisome are you about the supply chain on getting the Abrams tanks there and getting the, the troops, the Ukrainians, trained on them? Yeah, there's two facets here. First, uh, you know, from day one, I wanted to give uh, the Ukrainians the weapons they needed to win this world, this war. You know, we were, we were preparing them for a war of insurgency, and it took us a long time to figure out they could win this. So we were forever delaying and putting off decisions, giving them weapons like the Abrams, which in the spring offensive could be uh, decisive. It's the best tank. It's the most survivable tank in the world. So we have to get past that point. I think the second facet here uh, has to do with just what you said. Look, this is no longer just keeping the West and our country unified. It's producing the weaponry they need. The weaponry that the members of the Rada said to me is humanitarian aid, because uh, they, the Russians will continue uh, the crimes like I saw firsthand in Bucha, flattening a maternity hospital. The only way to stop that uh, inhuman behavior is unfortunately to give uh, them the weaponry to end this war quickly. Uh, right now they're firing, what, 11,000 artillery shells, the Ukrainians, in a couple days? 
That's how much we're producing in a month. So I'm going to go to that plant as well and other facilities and our oversight authority to see what we need to do to make sure those supply chains are in place. And again, we can help our allies win this war quickly and end the devastation. Congressman Mike Quigley, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you.